there. Welcome back. Today we're going to be having a look at the Everything Presence light sensor. This is a millimeter wave sensor with multi-zone tracking as well as multi-person tracking. And there's something really cool that Lewis has added in the way of software for controlling this device. So let's have a look. So to be totally transparent with you, Seed Studio did send me this device free of charge, but this is not a sponsor video and they have no control over what I'm gonna say. So the Everything Presence light sensor sells for 39 US dollars. Looking at the features, we've got the LD2450 millimeter wave sensor with a range of five to six meters, ideal for small to medium sized spaces. It offers tracking of up to three different targets and customizable detection zones. It also has an ambient light sensor built into the device. And I really like this. It's got the Bluetooth proxy for Home Assistant as well. This board also offers the option to upgrade to five or more different millimeter wave sensors in the future. So having a look at the box, the first thing I was really impressed with was this foam rubber padding that's really protecting this device during travel. Pulling the sensor out, we can see that it's got a really nice quality injection molded sensor case. We've got a ball joint, which is quite flexible, but also stays in place. It's not going to move around at all. Um, the base, you could either use some sort of adhesive or you could use some screws to hold it up or you could just stand it on a desk or table like that. It's got lots of ventilation, which is really great because these millimeter wave sensors get quite warm. On the underside over here, you can see we've got our USB-C power mounting point, and then it comes with a two meter power supply cable and a right angle joint for connecting the power. Doesn't include a power brick, you will have to supply your own. Setup is super easy. Just open up Home Assistant, Settings, Devices and Services, and there you can see it's found it already via Bluetooth. It's already found my Wi-Fi. I just put in the password. There we go, it's connected to the Wi-Fi, and now we can add it to Home Assistant. Now we can go along to ESP Home Builder, Show All Devices, and Take Control. This will now add the Everything Presence Light to your Home Assistant instance. Configuration is created and now we can install. Now that it's loaded the software, you can just go along to settings, devices and services, and now you can add it over here. So it's asking for the encryption key, so we can just go along, we'll just go along here to the ESP home and we'll edit that and we can select and copy the encryption key from here and we can go back here devices and services so we'll go and we'll add it and we will paste the encryption key in there and submit and there we go it's all loaded so having a look here we've got a huge number of entities available to us within home assistant so starting off the top here we've got our led so this is just an LED that you can control. And then we have all of our different zones. Now, when you first load this up, you will see that it only shows zone one. In order to get zone two, three, and four, you actually need to go to the disabled entities over here, click on zone four, for example, click on the little wheel and enable. So that will then enable that zone four and go along then and also enable the X and Y and the occupancy delay. So the first thing you want to do with the sensor is set the maximum distance that you want it to operate. So I've got a small room, so I've set mine to three meters, but this does help with the accuracy of the device. Next up, we've got the masks. So these are masks. So for example, areas that you might want to block off where you have fans or something that may cause an issue with false positives. Then we have the zones. So it starts off with a zone X and a Y. So this is where we set our different zones for detection within the system. We also have an occupancy delay. So this is where we can say to it, even if it stops measuring, just delay until you switch the device off. So that's quite useful having in there. So you can see we've got zone one, two, three, and we can enable zone four as well 
if we want to. Down the bottom here, we've got our illuminance or light sensor. We've got overall occupancy, and then we've got the different zones. So we can see whether it currently zone one is active, and we can also see the angle at which the target is. We can see the distances, the speed that the target is moving at. Then we go to target two and target three. Um, at the bottom here, we've got the illuminance offset, the installation angle. So that's actually the angle can be controlled that your angle of your sensor is looking at the targets in the room. So there's a huge amount of control over this device. Now, setting up the zones using the X and Y coordinates can be a real painful task. So I was really chuffed when I watched a recent video from Lewis showing this new graphical interface that's been created for setting up zones. So let me show you how this works. So we'll go along to the GitHub page, we'll open the Ad Store, and that will then open the link into Home Assistant. Then we can just search for it. There it is everything presents zone configurator. We'll hit the install button. There we go. We'll just turn on the watchdog auto update and show in sidebar and we'll hit start. Now we can see we've got it in our left hand bar over here and we can click onto that. And now we've got our different zones. So let's select a device. There is our device. And there we go. We can see we've got one zone there at the moment. So you can select between either a regular zone or an exclusion zone. So regular zones are zones where you want to detect motion. Exclusion zones are areas where you may have a fan or something that's interfering and you want to block that zone out. Creating the zones was a little bit confusing at first. You'll see here that it's currently showing the home assistant zones. Now I want to create my own user zones. So all I do now is I go and I drag and drop my zones. So that might be zone one, zone two, and say for example, zone three over there like that. Then we go save zones and it will now basically replace those home assistant zones with the new zones. As you can see zone one, zone two and zone three. If we wanted to create an exclusion zone we select the exclusion zone and then we can create an exclusion zone as well. So overall, this is a really great sensor if you're looking for something that offers you zone control. I love the new graphical user interface. It's absolutely a game changer when it comes to setting up millimeter wave sensors and getting them working properly. Now, one thing I would say, if you're looking for something that is super sensitive for movement, in other words, something that you're sitting in front of the TV and you don't want the light to turn out, I would then recommend going for the Everything Presence One because that has a slightly higher level of millimeter wave sensor. Alternatively, you could update the sensor yourself and put a new millimeter wave sensor into this one. Well, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think of the sensor. If you've enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.